staff there. I never thought I'd watch Pastor Selena dance in downtown Springfield. Man, we are so excited to start a new uh, series this morning called Friends. Everybody say Friends. And uh, man, what we're going to be looking at throughout the course of this series is, is honestly the, the biblical definition of friendship and uh, also how Jesus Christ demonstrated friendship. I don't know about you, but if Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, had friends, I think we need friends, right? But also not only just any type of friendship, but we need to be intentional with our friendships, we need to be selective with our friendships. We need to understand how we as Christ followers, man, can absolutely be who we're called to be through friendships. Because what, what does friendships do? It helps you be more like him. You might ask, you know, what does that look like? How is that possible? Well, we know that Jesus Christ died for you and I, and he died for his friends. And so, therefore, it teaches us to sacrifice for one another. We read in John uh, chapter 15, verse 13, it says, There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And just as I stated, Jesus died, man, for his friends, and then those friends died for others. And here we are in 2018, because of Jesus' sacrifice and his friend's sacrifice, we are here and able to sacrifice for one another. But see, godly friendship never takes you away from God. It always moves you further to God. See, I'm going to say that again. Godly friendship the difference between the worldly friendship and godly friendship. Godly friendship always, everybody say always, always, moves you forward to God, closer to God, never away. And so here in 2018, in a social media-driven culture, we have a lot of friends. Actually, they're just followers, or we follow people, or we stalk people on social media. And if we're being honest, we really struggle with this investment of godly friendships. And so today, we're going to be looking at how, through Jesus Christ's example and through his word, we're able to, to be who we're called to be and do what we're called to do according to friendship. So today's message, if you're taking notes, is called, I'll Be There For You. Of course, I had to include the theme song in my sermon today, but I'll be there for you. And the focus here today is that I know in a busy world like today, that I mean, we struggle investing in friendship, right? We, we struggle. We, you know, typically, it's, well, I'm, I'm too busy, or man, I just, you know, I, I think because of social media, which is an awesome avenue, but because we like someone's picture, we comment, or we message them, we feel like we've really, you know, invested in the friendship. But, but really, honestly, and biblically speaking, a true friendship, a true godly friendship are two or more individuals that come together with God being the foundation, knowing that we are here to sharpen one another, as, as Proverbs says, as I Iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And with that foundation being there, we know that everything that we say, everything that we do, and every thought that we have with our friendship is to grow closer to God and each other. Always closer to God, never away. And so we know in the New Testament church that in Acts chapter 2 that they, man, they literally worshiped together daily. They shared food. So that's biblical to go and eat after church. Amen. Man, and so, man, it, they absolutely shared food. Man, they, they lived life with one another. I've said this before, and I'll say it again, that people have asked me at times, Dylan, you know, how did you kind of, you know, stay away from, from the crowd that you came from? And honestly, it's because, man, godly friends and godly friendships were established, and we ate together. That's a huge plus. We prayed together, and we worshiped God. And church, I'm here to tell you, whether you walk in here with no friends, man, in Christ, or you walk in here with a lot of friends in Christ, we can be encouraged today by knowing that God is our friend number one, that's good news, that God is our friend, but number two, that we get to do this life together, and we get to be there for one another. That is what the church is. It's not a one-day, maybe two-day thing of the week where we come and sing songs and say, hey, you know, nice, nice to meet you. Have a great day, and then we kind of put hand sanitizer on real quick, right? But, I mean, we engage with one another. We'll be there for each other. That is what the church looks like, and when we are friends together. So, if you would, pray with me one more time before we get started. Lord, I recognize right now I have nothing to offer these people, Lord, but through the power of your word and through the power of your Holy Spirit, God, I believe that you can transform any person's life that's here today. God, I pray that they know that you love them, that you are their friends, and God, that we can uh, continue to grow and engage in our relationships that are established here today. God, we love you so much and pray this in your name. And everyone said, 
Amen. So as I began to start my faith journey uh, in my teenage years, uh, man, I, I was forced with this decision of, man, am I going to continue to kind of, um, you know, be around the same people even though they don't, they don't really live for the Lord anymore, um, or am I going to begin to engage in new relationships? And if I'm being honest this morning, I really struggled with wanting to make new relationships. Why? Because we are creatures of habit, and we don't like change, right? And so I remember uh, I was in Pastor Selena's youth group, and she was preaching a, a message that day. And I don't even know if it was about um, you know, this topic, but I remember almost just kind of complaining to God. Almost sitting there and saying, God, I don't have my friends anymore. Lord, I, I feel lonely. God, I just feel like, man, no one's there. And I'll never forget the Holy Spirit prompting me of saying, Dylan, in order to have godly friends, you've got to be a godly friend. And I said, oh God, I, I know that. I, I know that I'm a man of God now and I'm, and I'm living for you. But what the Holy Spirit taught me in that moment was we as believers have to sacrifice sometimes of, of what we're familiar with in, in order to embrace what God has prepared us for. And what I mean by that is sometimes we have to sacrifice some friendships in order to gain new healthy ones. And I know that that is a hard statement to hear today, and I'm not saying that we cannot continue to love on those people. We'll get to that later. But what I am saying here today is that we must engage in new relationships. How many people sitting around you, don't look at them, don't raise your hand, but how many people literally sitting right by you, man, like how many conversations have you been striked up with, and that was not the right word, right? But man, how many conversations around the, the people around you have you begun to invest with? How many people since this church has established that have you begun to take out and get to know one another, right? You say, well, pastors, that's your job. I'm here to tell you that a brother can only drink so much coffee, right? That is where we all come together and we invest in each other. So today's focus is this, and I said it before, to have godly friends you must be a godly friend. Say, with that, say that with me, please. To have godly friends, you must be a godly friend. You know, I've noticed this trend um, here recently. I don't know why. It must be a millennial social media thing, and I'm a millennial, so I'm preaching myself, right? But I think sometimes we spend so much time on the Internet with, with one another that we sacrifice the actual physical um, entertainment engagement with each other that we end up feeling quite lonely because we think that we have some solid friendships, but really we don't. And so I've noticed that a lot of people are, are, are saying, man, I'm just lonely. I just don't have very many friends in my life. I was looking on uh, social media yesterday, and there was an individual that used to come to this church, and he was doing awesome, and, and all of a sudden he began to kind of go back, and, and he posted yesterday, he said, man, I wish I had some friends. I feel lonely. And as a pastor, that breaks your heart because I'm not blaming me, I'm not blaming the church, but it breaks my heart of knowing how many people walk in these doors and out these doors or walk outside and they're desperate for fellowship, they're desperate for connection, but they're going to the wrong places and the wrong people to find them. But church, I want to encourage everyone today that in order for us to have godly friends around us, we need to not just pray that God would send us godly friends, but we need to become godly friends. What does that look like? We begin to invest in one another. There, I remember talking to a lady, and she just, man, for 30 minutes told me about how bad, that no one, or how much no one liked her. And finally, I was like, so what are you doing to investing in other, you know, other people's lives? Well, I don't know. I just figured that God would send them in my life. And is that true? Will that happen? Absolutely. But we have to know that we cannot just pray about, man, having godly friends. We need to invest in godly friendships. And that takes work, I know. But, man, every relationship has a bank account. I'm not talking about money, but I'm talking about emotional bank account. What that means is every single person who you're connected with in this friendship, you have to begin to make deposits, right? Because you can only make so many withdrawals where all of a sudden there's no longer any money there, right? I, I learned that in college really quick, man. The more you withdraw, all of a sudden money's not just going to magically appear, in the same way with the relationships, if we are not investing in them, if we are not, man, man bl blessing other people and spending time, man, our relationships can get stale, and we absolutely need those, man, to be who we're called to be and to have what we're called to have. So let's look in Scripture on John chapter 15, verse 12. It says, this is my commandment, love each other 
in the same way that I have loved you. Verse 13, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Verse 14, you are my friends. Everyone say friends. If you do what I command. Why is this particular text so significant is because in the Old Testament, Abraham and Moses were the two individuals that God said, man, that, that, man you are my friends. Now, there were certain other individuals that he had a great connection with, but Abraham and Moses were the two that God really had a great connection with and said, that, man, you are my friends. Everyone else in that time didn't, couldn't just go into the Lord's presence like you and I can here today. And so that was a rare thing. Then all of a sudden, Jesus Christ came up on the scene. He began to invest in people's lives. He began to love his disciples and be there for his disciples. And he says that you are my friends. And what's, what's ironic about that is that Peter and James and John were kind of in his inner circle. And then the other disciples, man, they would walk and they would follow Jesus. Because in the old days, the rabbis, who were the teachers of the Old Testament law, which is in the Old Testament in your Bible today, what would happen is probably about 12 or so rabbi, or, uh, disciples would follow these rabbis. And then all of a sudden, Jesus comes up and he sees a fisherman. He says, hey, come follow me. Right? And he calls all the people who, who no one else would have guessed that the Messiah would call to follow. And all of a sudden, Jesus has quite, man, quite the honorage that no one else believed. And he began to call them friends. I tell that to you here this morning because some of you walk in this place right here today, right here this morning. You feel like there's no way that Jesus Christ would consider you his friends. You think that you have messed up way too many times. You were not raised the way that they were raised. But man, when, when you look at the life of Jesus and the fact that he called the disciples, fishermen, and regular people his friends, you better believe that he looks at you and says that you're his friend. That's where you say amen, church, because in that, God is there for you. You know that old song in, in Toy Story, I think it is, you got a friend in me, right? Man, before Woody was on the scene, man, Jesus, the Holy Spirit is there saying, I am there for you always. Have you ever allowed, or has anybody ever let you down and you, you thought they were there for you, but man, you came to find out that they really weren't? Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, promises us that he is going to be there always. But verse 14, it says, you are my friends. If what? You do what I command. Are, how do you know if you're a friend of Jesus? Man, do you do what Jesus does? That's the great thing about friendships, man. You don't have to debate about where to go to eat. You don't have to debate about what you go and do. You already know, man, where you're headed because you guys are similar. And in the same way, there's a lot of people in the church today who are like, man, I'm all about Jesus. Right, man, we are so tight. It's kind of like, you know, Tim Tebow. I follow him on social media. I would like to think that he knows me, but he doesn't, right? And, uh, you know, he's actually, you know, making some steps up in, you know, this baseball career. So all those haters, there you go. He's making it. The Lord's with him, right? But in that, if Tim Tebow came in here this morning, he wouldn't say, Pastor D, what up? Right? He'd be like, who's this dude up there, right? He looks like he's 12. Why is he talking? He doesn't know me. Right? I could, man, I could follow him. He could even accept my friend request, right? But at the end of the day, man, he is not my friend, and, or I'm not his friend if we don't live it together. In the same way with Jesus Christ, we can post his scripture all day long. We can check our religion as Christianity all day long. But if we are not one with God, if we are not living out his commands, we are not God's friend. We are not his friends. Is it a question of Jesus is our friend? He's always there. But, man, the question is for us, are we willing man, to obey his commands or not? And the fact that he died for us, man, it shows us that we are supposed to live sacrificially man, for other people. But that takes commitment. That takes work. And that's why here today in 2018, it's really hard to go and spend time with people outside of the church. And it goes on to say in, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 17, it says, if someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need, but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? See, dear children, let us not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Verse 19, our actions will show that we belong to the truth, so we will be confident when we stand before God. 
just out of curiosity, raise your hand if you, you've had somebody who you absolutely thought was your friend, and then they said they were always going to be there for you, but you came to find out that they really weren't your friend and weren't there for you. Anybody other than me, right? That is a, that is a, man, a very you know, familiar you know, concept that we, that we have. Why? Because we've all been let down before. But the cool thing about man, love with Christianity is man, it, it, it's, it, we know that we're going to get hurt at times. I have invested in so much time with so many people who absolutely, man, just, you know, we, we have no connection anymore. And there's been times in my life where, man, I, I thought that I was doing them a favor. I took them out. I invested in them. I prayed for them. I was there for them. I picked them up. I gave them the ride, even when they didn't say thanks, right? I'm not bitter. But, you know, and, and absolutely tried everything. And, man, I was there for them, but then I came to find out, but they weren't quite there for me. And as an early believer, I got mad because I'm like, man, we are supposed to, I mean, you're supposed to be thankful. We're supposed to do this together. But the great thing about, you know, being a Christian is we don't love, man, to receive. We love just sacrificially. We don't, we don't necessarily care if somebody's taking advantage of us because we know it's not about us, but it's about glorifying God with our actions. See, when it says that, that, that we should not just merely say that we love each other, but we should show the truth by our actions, Man, is somebody, or, or do you have a group of people who may tend to follow you wherever you go? Now, I'm not talking about a weird, you know, stalker or entourage, but what I'm saying is, man, do you, are you a friend? This is how you know if you're a good friend. Are you somebody, when someone's in trouble, man, they're going to you? I just, that's rhetorical, but I want you to think about that. Are you the type of friend, are you an individual that when somebody is in trouble, man, they know that they can count on you? It didn't take me very long in my, in my faith journey to realize that uh, Pastor Selena's husband, John, was somebody that I could absolutely rely on. I remember in one of my like, first like, car wrecks, um, see, I didn't get my license until I was like 17. Don't judge me. I didn't love Jesus before. And so I finally got my license, and I'm, I'm figuring out this driving thing, kind of. And um, I remember driving on Battlefield, and I was at this little this little. You know, turning lane and going into Panera Bread, and I, I remember this person stopped right here, and they're kind of waving me on, and, and y'all know what I'm talking about. You've been in these situations. You can't see the other lane, and you, you start sweating, and the person you're telling you to wave is like, come on. I'm like, I'm waiting, right? And I was scared. I was ready to go, and all of a sudden, man, I just went, and I got hit so hard, and if you're here today, and that was you, I forgive you, and I love you, right? <laughs> but I'll never forget. Dude, I was, I mean, I was messed up. I, I called John. I said, John. Then my, my truck's messed up. I wasn't crying. I just had tear in my eye, right? I was a little scared. I was rattled, right? I thought I was dying, but I was all right. And John came up. He's like, do you all right? I said, I think, right? I mean, I was just razzled. I'll never forget this. And then all of a sudden, man, there was this trend of him always being there for me. And you say, yeah, but Dylan, what's the big deal about that? Well, the big deal is I didn't grow up in that culture where people are there for you, man, at all times. Matter of fact, I grew up in a culture where you know, my friends were really only there when, when the hype was going on, you know, when the parties were there and when, when all the fun was. But man, there when I was at my lowest, I didn't have those people. See, not only was John there with me when I was in trouble, man, he would be there with me when I was down about my family. I began to pray and cry out and, and just wonder if, if, if God was going to ever move in my family. See, then there was the times where I didn't really know if, if, if God was actually going to open up the, the, the calling for me to go into the ministry, and I wasn't for sure, and I doubted it. And time and time again, John would encourage me and tell me that, man, that he, that God has a plan. And I just want to ask you here today, are you somebody that people look to for encouragement? Are you somebody that when, when, when things are going downhill and, 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 and they don't really know what to do, are you a godly friend that people can re rely on when things aren't so clear? Because what I've noticed in such a consumer society and culture, a lot of people say that they'll be there for you, but they won't be, actually. And not only that, a lot of people are 100% cool with um. Asking people to be there for them, but when it comes to you being there for them or them for you, it, man, they're not there. See, uh, leading a church, it's funny because anytime there's a uh, big fun event, something going on, fried food, and things like that, when we have 
in the get together and things like that, you don't have to ask people to come. They're like, free food, I'm there. I feel like the Spirit's leading me to go there right now, right? And then what's crazy is we're like, hey, we're going to have water at the square, and uh, man, we're going to go and pass out, you know, tons of waters. And I swear this is not a condemning message. It's not where I'm getting at. But did you know that when, like yesterday, when it's like 205 degrees outside, right, and we're going to pass out these water bottles, did you know that there's a lot smaller line of people? Why is that? I know schedule conflicts and things like that. Don't, I'm, not, I'm not judging anybody. But what I'm getting at, there is a select few of people that no matter what, no matter what the need is, they are going to be there for you. They are going to be committed when all the light, lights, camera, and action isn't on them. And it's not all fun. And I think part of this, this godly friendship, man, mentality, in order for people to really be, man, just attracted to this lifestyle is when we live our lives, man, so sacrificially for God, number one, and others, where people say, I want in on that. Like I, like, I can notice that you have something a little bit different. I know that you're quite dependable, and, and that's what I want. And so that's what Jesus is saying. He says, hey, you can say all day long, all day long that you're, my, you know, that, that you're my friend, but if you're not truly living out, if you're not helping your brother and sisters in need, are you really loving them? The church there has to come to this place man, where we begin to love them where they're at, no matter the cost. It goes on in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. It says, dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Share each other's burdens and, this, and in this way obey the law of Christ. And here's what I really man, feel like the Lord wants me to speak on today. I think that we all have these people in our lives who we absolutely care for, who, if we're being honest, they just have a hard time living for the Lord, right? We all have them. We know them. And so the question then becomes, and, and as a pastor, you get this all the time, right? Say, well, I want to love them. I want to be their friends, but I don't really know how. And so, my, you know, there's one side where people who are in the faith absolutely live in the kind of their holy bubble. They stay away from anybody who, you know, just listens to secular music or anything like that. And they just kind of stay here and just wait till Jesus comes back. That's not what we're supposed to be or do. But then there's this other extreme where there's people who, I mean, they, they love God. They're, they're a disciple. They're a friend of God. But see, they, they haven't quite sacrificed their friendship yet. And so what happens is, man, they know that they're not supposed to, to go back to the same scenes that, that God already convicted, of, convicted them of before. But because they, they want to be a good friend, because they really want to love this friend, man, they, they begin to jeopardize their faith. And that's what it says, be careful. Everybody say, be careful. Y'all are quiet this morning. Come on, everybody say, be careful. Be careful. Louder you are, the better I preach, I promise, Okay. It says, be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Why does he say be careful? It's another word of saying have discernment, which means and understand the temperature of the room. He says, I know that you want to go and help your brother and sister in Christ who's struggling right now. But we got to get you to a point where you can go back into the darkness to show them the light. Because if we're never in the light, if, if all the people in our friend groups, man, just act like they love God and, and say they love God, but really there's no, there's no obedience there, you better believe that you're going to be like them. The old saying, what is it? Show me your friends. And what? I'll show you your future. Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. And so what happens is, especially in college, People who are raised in the church, or maybe not, and then they get around their other friends, and they begin to explore with different things, and, and they're like, man, I know I shouldn't do this. And they begin to say, man, like, maybe it's okay. Like, like, may, like really, actually, maybe it's okay that I'm, I'm doing this, because, you know, these people aren't going to church, and, and they need to know that I can go and party and, and do my own thing with them, so that way that they, you know, that they can know God. But did you know that remember, godly friendships never take you away from God. They always move you to God, right? See, you can say that you're being a good friend, but are you really being a good friend if you're, if you're with, one, with your mouth that you're praising God, but your actions, you're completely denying God? 
And the scripture says, as a matter of fact, there's people like this in the darkness that try to excuse these sins. But man, how deep that darkness really is. I'm not trying to be discouraging to anybody today, but church, I have a, I mean, a sick feeling. Like, I, I can't even express it to you. I mean, I feel like even right now in the service, I feel, I felt this spiritual warfare on me like I have not felt in so long. And I'll tell you why. I am sick and tired of watching the enemy sweep in in churches, man, and, and watching young women and young men begin to forfeit their calling for a one-night stand, for a little hangout with some friends. And you don't realize is that you are not being a good friend. You're being a bad friend. They need to see a man or woman of God to step up and say, hey, I love you, but that lifestyle you're living, that ain't for me no more. That, 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 like, I've been there, done that. I'm not saying you can't ever talk to them. I can't say, I'm not saying you don't ever love them. Listen, I hang out with with people of the world all the time. But did you know about 90% of the time I'm living with people in the world? Why? Because you can't be a light in the dark world if you don't have the light in you. You cannot. How many times in my own family, man, when they are behind bars or in rehab, man, they call me and say, you won't believe this. I'm like, here we go. Man, I think I'm going to be Billy Graham. I'm going I'm to go win them. Man, I know what God's done in my life. Let's do this. D, are you ready? I'm like, I'm ready, man. Like, I know you're ready. Like, jump on the train. We're ready. All right, let's go. Week one, week two, man, of sobriety, and they get out, and, man, they're, they're going good. But all of a sudden, man, because those bars aren't there, they be, they're faced with this decision. Am I going to follow God or friends? And what happens is I've seen this in my own family's life. Man, there's people call, hey, man, you coming around doing this thing again? Are you coming around to do this? And, man, for a little bit, you can say, ah, oh, no. No, man, I'm doing that Jesus thing. Oh, you're doing that Jesus thing. Okay. Kind of like last summer and the summer before that. Okay. Last time you were locked up. Okay. And some of you right now are dismissing me because you're like, man, yeah, on that drugs and, and, and jail and prison, all that. that's not me. Okay. How about when you're at your work, with your work friends? How about your girlfriends, your boyfriends? How about those people who, man, you know that like you're in with that crowd. See, I was forced with a decision when I came to know God, when all of a sudden, you know, my friend group began to change and one group was going over here and one was going over here. I was forced with the decision, man, am I going to go back to everything I knew before? Am I going to sacrifice my friend group and grow in and in, in develop new ones? In church, there were times, and, and I pray that this resonates with someone today, even one person. There were times, if I'm being honest with you, I didn't want to go and do the drugs anymore. I didn't want to go and live that party scene. I didn't want to go and be around that, you know, the tough guy club. And I know some of you are looking at me with skinny jeans. You're like, what is he talking about? Don't allow him to fool you. And I remember just sitting there, I'm like, man, I miss sometimes them looking at me like, that's D. He's the crazy guy, right? Y'all think I'm crazy now, and now I'm crazy of the spirit, right? Then it was just flesh. And I was forced with this decision, this, this decision, man, am I going to follow God or not? And what God showed me was, Dylan, you can forfeit right now. You can sacrifice, man, for your popularity. And you can, you can sacrifice your, 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 your previous, um, you know, reputation to gain the whole world. Dylan, you can, you can absolutely you know, earn all this for nothing. Or you can sacrifice it. And live for me and be a voice in this generation to help other men and women of God, young and old, to know that, man, you can live this out. And there's no greater life. There's no greater friendships than those that are in Christ Jesus. I've been around a lot of people that were there for me when all things were well, when I was living for the world. But there's only a few that were there for me when all things were bad. But, man... In this thing called Christianity, these friendships that we have established, there is nothing quite like it. And when you see there in verse 2, it says, and share each other's burdens. If, if you recall scripture in, in Jesus in the garden of the Gethsemane, Geth, Gethsemane, who is he with? Peter, James, and John, his inner circle of his 12 disciples. And, and if you remember, man, Jesus goes to them, and, and they're, they're, they're sleeping. They're supposed to be praying for Jesus because Jesus knows that next day he's going to be crucified on the cross. And see, Jesus goes back to him. He says, hey, why are you sleeping? 
Oh, sorry, Jesus. Oh, sorry, I love you, man. You're, you're my friend. We're brothers, right? Hey, keep praying for me. Jesus goes back. Man, I'm really nervous. I really don't want to die on this cross. And I know I've been, I've added this in my sermons the past couple times, but this is where I'm at. And Jesus is praying. He's like, man, I, I just need people to encourage me. I need some friends right now to be for me because I'm, I'm worried. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. He goes back to Peter and James and John and says, why are y'all sleeping again? So we're praying. We're, we're just, eyes are closed and praying, you know? Jesus, we're praying. We're just, we're just tired, right? And he says, forget it. Our acute, my accusers are here. Why do I say that? Because Jesus needed his friends in one of those weakest moments. And church, I'm here to tell you that every single man or God in this place needs a, a brother or sister in Christ who is there for you. Man, when times are good and when times are bad, when you begin to get tempted to go back to your old ways, and when you're forced with this decision, are, are you going to obey God or deny God? You need somebody. You need some friends in your life to look at you regardless of how you want to receive it at that moment and speak the word of God and show you tough love and love you and say, hey, for you and me and everyone else around us, we are not sacrificing what we have of God for the world. And church, are you that kind of friend? Do you share people's burdens with one another? And the last scripture, and we'll be done. First Peter 2, 11 through 12, it says, friends, or excuse me, Hebrews 10, 24 through 25, it says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Verse 25, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. And let us not neglect our meeting together. So many people in their, one of their New Year's resolution, go and look at it, one of their top fives, I'm going to be faithful to church. I'm going to get in a life group. If you've been to the well, you know that we do life together, right? And you're like, I'm going to be a part of that group. And then all of a sudden Wednesday comes or whatever the day is, you're like, man, I'm busy. I really don't want to be a part of that group, right? And did you know that it doesn't start, man, right there, the decision of, of, of not investing in people. It starts when all of a sudden we're like, man, do I really want to sacrifice my time? to go to and, and, and sacrifice my money to be with this person. And what we begin to say is and convince ourselves is, you know what, I really don't need that. But, but what if the question is, it's not that you need them, but maybe they need you. Maybe there's some people in this room, and I know there are, that if you began to be man, on fire for God, if you are a man or woman who stand up and say, man, I'm going to be invested in this church. Listen, church, there are some people literally that are struggling to believe that they have any self-worth. And what would it look like for, for one of you today to begin to come aside one of these younger students and, and say, hey, I've been where you've been. I just want to encourage you that, man, there is hope at the end of the road. We must do this friendship together. So my question as we end here today is, are you being a godly friend? Are you being a godly friend? It's twofold. Number one, do you not only say that you are God's friend, but do you live it out? See, God's there. He's there for you. His love is unconditional. But are you a true believer in him? Are you obeying God? Does your lifestyle pattern after his? And secondly, man, is there somebody in your life that you know who God's asked, you know God's asked you to be a part of their life? You know that God's, uh, man, laid it upon your heart to invest in them, but, man, you're just not willing to do it. You haven't been up to this point, or they've been such a negative influence on you, it's really hindering you. I'll end with this story and we'll be done. I had somebody text me the other day and say, hey, Pastor D, he said, um, man, God really laid this person on my heart, and he's my, my best friend since we were kids. We grew up together, and man, he's not really, you know, living for the Lord, and man, I'm just, I'm, you know, I was wondering if maybe that you could reach out to him. And of course, I'm willing to you know, pray and reach out for him. But church, did you know that, man, the, the New Testament church, the, the early church, didn't just wait for the apostles to get around and say, hey, you fix it. They said, no, I have the same spirit that Jesus did. I have the same spirit that Peter did and the apostles. And I think that God can use me to be an influence in my friend group. And you here today, if you embrace man, your friendship, 
If you embrace, man, the authority that God has given you, some of you are teachers. Some of you are, are, are business owners. Some of you and your stay-at-home moms. Fill in the blank. Some of you are, are college students. If you embrace the authority that God has given you and you believe that God is going to use you, man, to help bring revival to this nation, to quit just trying to fit in, but, man, to stand out and say, I might be in the world, but I'm not of it. I might have, you know, I might go to church and I might read my Bible, but I'm also going to go and, and invest in the community and I'm going to go and hang out with my friends. But I refuse to allow the world and other, other influences around me, man, to sacrifice the gospel. Are you a godly friend? I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Lord, I, I know this is where you have us today. And Father, um, I pray right now, Jesus, that your spirit as it's already been, Lord, we'll just continue to, God, speak to people's hearts. God, I pray right now that you will bring about names in people's lives who, God, you've asked them to be a godly friend, who they are literally dying. Lord, I'm so tired of going to funerals where people just lack community. Lord, you look at the suicide rates in, the, in America. God, I, I believe it's rising because we live in a, in a social media-driven culture. God, where we lack real, authentic relationships. Lord, I'm, I'm asking on behalf of the leadership of the church for men and women in this place here today to begin to invest, to be sacri sacrificial lovers. God, to just, to, to, to give their time away, give their money away, give their, their everything about, just to help people. God, that's what it's about. It's not about religion, it's about relationship with you. And as we have a relationship with you, we begin to, to have relationship with others. So I'm just gonna ask if there's any men or women of God that are ready to, to be used by God to, to, man, to, to invest in people's lives and to say, man, like I, I haven't done the best job of getting them to meet new people. Maybe the reason you're lonely is because you haven't invested in those around you. If you're somebody that's just willing to, to begin to man, be used like that, to establish godly friendships, man, to just lay it all out on the line and say, man, it is not about my comfortability. It's not about man, me feeling, man, man, at ease, it's about living my life for God and other people. I'm gonna invite you to come and, and pray and, and pray for man, a revival of, of, of relationships to happen in this church and around. And if you're here today and you know you have not been a godly friend, you've tried to help people, you love them, but honestly, you just, you're being influence in the bad rather than the good and you're ready to make a committed decision to, to God today to say God I'm done allowing myself to be influenced in the in a bad way Lord I've justified I've covered up my decisions but God I know what it is you've asked me to do and Lord I'm I'm ready to just to come back in God I'm ready to to be a true friend of you I'm gonna invite you to come and pray I want everyone to stand Father as we go into prayer Lord, I pray that you'll speak to people's hearts today. God, for those men and women that are ready to invest in people's lives, to help a brother and sister out in Christ, Lord, to go and, and reach out to the hurting people. We are absolutely called to reach out to them. But Lord, we don't sacrifice the truth. We don't compromise. God, we empathize with them, but we do not compromise the truth. Father, would you speak that? God, for those individuals here today that need to begin to, to really evaluate their friends, God, I pray that they, God, will be a godly friend and not be taken advantage of. So, Lord, we love you. Thank you that you're our friend. Thank you that you give, give us friends in our lives. God, we love you and pray this in your name. And everybody said, amen. We're going to worship the Lord. If you want to come and pray, you can. I'm Selena Freeman, one of the pastors here at The Well. We are so glad you tuned in to this sermon and hope the Lord spoke to you through it. If you have any questions about the message, your faith, or a prayer request, you can visit the contact page of our website. We would love to meet you in person, so please come by and see us. 
At The Well, we believe that all people can be found by the grace of God, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and freed to love like Christ. Have a blessed week, and remember, you are so very loved by our awesome God.